the economic center of southern West Virginia, an outdoor drama that tells the story of the creation of our state and once home to a young fiddler who became the longest serving member of Congress in U.S. history. I'm Wayne Worth and you're watching On the Road in West Virginia, R55 counties, Raleigh County. Long before outdoor theater became popular, most outdoor drama in what is today Raleigh County consisted of early explorers and pioneers surviving this vast and rugged wilderness. As early as 1742, John Peter Sally, you know, the dude who'd be the first to discover coal in West Virginia, would also be the first white explorer to journey through Raleigh County. However, it wouldn't be until the early 1800s before the first permanent settlers would arrive on the scene, with one of them being Alfred Beckley, who would be the founder of what is today Beckley, West Virginia. Now, Big Al also had some influence, which resulted in the Giles, Fayette, and Canal Turnpike being constructed through this neck of the woods during the late 1830s and most of the 1840s. As a result, the town of Beckley would be established in 1838, and Big Al would name the town after his father, John. Growth would be slow, though, as the town's population by 1860 would only grow to a whopping 160. Now the Civil War in Raleigh County would consist of nothing more than troop movements, minor skirmishes, and two dudes by the name of Colonel Rutherford B. Hayes and Sergeant William McKinley, who would be stationed right here in Beckley and after the war would become U.S. presidents. However, the dawn of the 20th century would bring big opportunities through big coal. It started with the coming of the c and Railroad in 1873, which created a small timber boom along the New River. Then in 1891, the first coal mine opened in Royal, and the rest is history. What ensued was both the Virginian Railway and the CNO running spur lines throughout the county, and by 1925, coal production reached over 17 million tons. Now, this boom would bring a lot of growth and prosperity to Raleigh County. However, like much of the southern coal fields during the early 1900s, safety was not a priority, and as a result, led to disaster. Sadly, one disaster happened on April 28, 1914 at Eccles when a contractor blew open a small hole between two sections of the mine, disrupting the ventilation system, which resulted in methane gas to build up. Of course, back in those days, a headlamp consisted of an open flame which ignited the methane gas, causing an explosion in both the number 5 and number 6 mines, killing 183 miners. Sadly, 12 years later, another explosion would claim the lives of 19 miners at the same number 5 mine. The early coal boom would also bring labor disputes as the 1902 New River coal strike would reach a boiling point during a rally in the community of Stanford. What would be called the Battle of Stanford was meant to be a showdown between striking miners and Baldwin Phelps detectives. However, on a winter's morning in 1903, the detectives opened fire on a home where miners were staying, killing three men. This incident would be the precursor of the West Virginia Mine Wars. Now, coal's heyday in Raleigh County would peak during the 1940s and begin to decline during the 1950s as production went from 16 million tons during World War II to only 5 million by the 1970s. However, new opportunities would arrive by the way of arts and entertainment and, yes, the West Virginia Turnpike. Originally founded in 1955 as the West Virginia Historical Drama Association, Theater West Virginia for decades has told the story of our state through outdoor theater. Its first production, Honey in the Rock, which opened in 1961 at Cliffside Amphitheater at Grandview State Park, tells the story of the creation of our state in 1863. Nine years later, on West Virginia's 107th birthday in 1970, the musical Hatfields and McCoys opened. And with both plays running just about every summer, Grandview State Park and Cliffside Amphitheater turned into a popular tourist attraction. Now down the road a piece is what I call the Arts and Crafts Center of Appalachia and the very best of West Virginia craftsmanship. Yes, I'm talking about the Tamarack, where since 1996 has showcased more than 2,000 West Virginians in their craft. From quality glassware and pottery to books and other publications that celebrate the heritage of our state and region, Tamarack attracts over a half a million visitors every year and had generated over $78 million in revenue within its first 11 years of being open to the public. And for you Bill Withers fans, yes, we can't forget about him. Born in the Raleigh County coal camp of Slab Fork and later raised in Beckley, Bill would embark on a famed music career where he would win three Grammys for his hit songs, Ain't No Sunshine, Just the Two of Us, and Lean On Me. Raleigh County becoming both a center of arts and entertainment and also becoming the economic center of southern West Virginia came in large part by way of the West Virginia Turnpike. 
Built in the 1950s, first as a two-lane highway and during the 1970s and 80s as a four-lane interstate, the West Virginia Turnpike connected the southeastern part of the United States with Raleigh County. And much to the credit of a well-known fiddler from Sophia, West Virginia, who by the way would become the longest serving member of Congress in U.S. history. A leader that would bring more four-lane highways to our state, connecting us with endless opportunities. Our West Virginia treasure, the late Robert C. Byrd. I'm Wayne Worth, and until next time, always remember what we value and hold important to our lives today came from events that happened yesterday, and it's when we begin to understand the events of yesterday that we fully embrace today, which makes tomorrow become less of a mystery.